It's good to be back. Uh, I was in away in the States for three weeks. I was two weeks in Florida. So since it's Ash Wednesday, I can't really tell too many stories. Like, you know, I have these like mini ears. That's, that's a story and a lot of roller coaster rides with Father Raphael. So I'll say that for another time. Today, I wanted to share a story of uh, one of the priests at IPF, who's one of my instructors of this program that I'm taking. And so he grew up in South Dakota, and he shared the story about when he was young, in elementary school, he wanted to uh, earn some extra money. So him and his older brother decided to do a newspaper route. So they go to the distribution center early in the morning, pick up all these newspapers, and, and then they would distribute them for the day and get some money. One winter day, though, because he's living in South Dakota, it's so cold that him and his older brother decide, no, not today. We're done distributing newspapers. So they refuse to go. And the father says, sons, there are hundreds of people waiting for you to distribute newspapers. You are going. But the sons refuse. They, no, we've made up our mind. We're not going. The father ended up convincing or at least dragging the boys into the car. And so when the boys got into the car, they thought, all right, payback time. You know, we're furious. And so they gave their dad the silent treatment in the car. They didn't speak a single word. He said the father tried to, you know, get the boys to talk and try to cheer them up. But no, the boys were furious. And so they gave him the silent treatment. So regardless of any effort, nothing was spoken. Finally, the dad dropped them off at the distribution center. And before he let the boys out, he, he turned around and the son realized his dad was crying. And he said with tears in his eyes, these words, why won't you talk to me? Why won't you talk to me? So the boys left, and after distributing newspapers for the day, they walked back home, and as they were approaching their home, they saw an ambulance at the driveway. And so they, they rushed in to see what happened at home. And when they got home, their dad had a heart attack and was dead. The last words this boy heard his father say to him, why won't you talk to me? The boy ended up becoming a priest. And he says whenever he doesn't feel like praying, he just hears these words again and again. Why won't you talk to me? This Lent we're experiencing so much in our world, in our lives. Ukraine, two years of COVID, personal lives too, like anxiety, stress. I'm sure many people, you felt like it's just rising up. Or addictions, broken relationships. The list can go on and on. We're all suffering, struggling in one way or another. And it's easy, like when Lent comes and you think, oh, prayer, fasting, almsgiving, time to amp it up. You might feel like you got nothing in the tank, and you might feel like you don't really want to enter into the season of Lent. You might feel angry at God. It's like, I already got enough going on. Why do I have to do all this extra stuff? Or maybe you just want to give God the silent treatment, like, I'm okay with my life, and I don't want to do any extra. So it's easy to be like those two boys. You know, when we feel like God's imposing something upon us, just as the two boys felt like their father was imposing going to the distribution center, that they had to pick up newspapers and distribute for the whole day, we can feel like that too. That all of a sudden, what, like, God's making me fast this whole day, and I have to do all these extra prayers and almsgiving? I'm supposed to give up all this stuff that I own? It's easy to give God the silent treatment. We forget, in giving God the silent treatment, the awesome, awesome privilege it is to have a loving Father 
who cares so much for us that he's inviting us to this season of Lent. We forget how good it is that we get to hear proclaim the goodness of God right here, right now. That there is a Father who cares so deeply for us that he knows what's best for us. God loves me way more than I love myself. God loves you infinitely more than you love yourself. That means God knows way more what is truly good for you. God knows what is best for you way more than we think. And so God is inviting us as a good and loving father, pleading with us, to really wholeheartedly embark on this Lenten journey today. So this is how Jesus lived his Lent. When he did this 40 days of fasting and prayer in the desert, he lived it in a relationship with the Father. There was never a single moment in the life of Jesus in which his Father had to say to him, why won't you talk to me? Never a single moment in the life of Christ where the father had to say those heart-rending words to his son. Not a single moment. And Jesus stayed in that intimate relationship with his father throughout the entire passion and death. If you read John chapter 16, verse 32, Jesus says, you are all going to leave me, speaking to the disciples, you are all going to leave me, and yet I am not alone. Because the Father is with me. Jesus lived in intimate relationship with his Father, in intimate dialogue continually. There was never a single moment in the life of Christ where the Father had to say with a broken heart, why won't you talk to me? So Jesus sets the model for us, and then he invites us to also live in this intimate relationship with the Father throughout Lent. So in today's gospel, we see this so clearly. Jesus talks about prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, and the only reason he gives to do it is because of a relationship with the Father who sees you and will reward his sons and daughters for embarking on prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. The Father knows it's hard. And the Father will reward his sons and daughters who respond to the invitation to get into Lent. That's what Lent's all about. So throughout this day, I've had probably a dozen times where I've thought, I felt the hunger pangs and I've thought, ah, I just want to complain or eat or just distract myself. Definitely avoid, like, saying, Father, I'm hungry. But I've heard that voice again. Why won't you talk to me? And I have. I've tried my best just to say, okay, Father, like, I'm hungry. I have a headache. And all of a sudden, it's like, this. I feel God's presence. And so throughout these next 40 days, you know, there's going to be hundreds, thousands of moments. You're going to feel a little prompting to pray. Turn off the TV. Stop scrolling through the phone. It's time to pray. And it's that decision point. Dun, dun, dun. What are you going to do? You know? All of a sudden, if you could just hear that voice of the Father, why won't you talk to me? And then just talk to him. Father, I don't feel like praying. Good. At least you're honest. That's the start of a beautiful conversation. Or you're walking down the street. And you see a homeless person. 
and you feel that prompting, maybe I should just say hi and smile. And it's like, nah, they won't even look at me. But instead of ignoring that, that little prompting, just hear the Father's voice. Why won't you talk to me? And then go. Start a conversation. You don't have to give him money. But you can give him love. So if you want great ideas for Lent, ideas for prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, go on Google. There's thousands of creative ideas for things you can do for Lent. But if you want just one thought, one question, one kind of thread throughout which the entire Lenten journey can hang together, be held together, something that gets at the heart of why we're doing this. Something that will reveal to you the reason and give you those little inspirations throughout the day to say, okay, conversion time. Allow these six words to continually be something that echoes in your heart, just like that priest who told me the story. Why won't you talk to me?